soon it will be Halloween. Mm-hmm. The Nightmare Before Christmas, one of the most iconic stop motion animated films of all time. It somehow did the impossible and cemented itself as both a Halloween and Christmas viewing tradition. I mean, uh, what other movie can even claim that? Also, it's wild how this film was initially received as just okay when it was first released, only to grow into a pop culture phenomenon over the next 30 years. Wow, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> Looks like Jack isn't the only skeleton in this video. It's me, I'm the other skeleton. Surprised, aren't you? However, with any masterpiece that graces our eyes, comes along with it its cheap imitators. And oh man, am I talking cheap. Unfortunately, I'm talking about the mockbuster felony that is Witchmas. Yet another addition into the ripoff genre from its director, Reggie Daniels, and the uh, studio that commits uh, war crimes against humanity, Wow Now Entertainment. I, I can't quite explain in proper words how much I utterly despise this company. Oh, your day will come, Wow Now. Just you wait. I got a video that is locked and loaded just for you. <laughs> Stay tuned. Reggie has been responsible for such hits as uh, the, the Grump Who Stole Christmas 2. Geez, I, I wonder what that one's about. Also, we have the writing chops of the legendary BC-14, known for the hood classics of Bigfoot vs. Megalodon, The Legends Are Real. Spoiler alert, Megalodons were, in fact, real. Though I wish this movie was not. Bigfoot, meet me at the dock immediately. We're going to the six lockup to interrogate our new prisoner. Interrogation. whoop de do But real quick, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor. Vessi. Vessi makes stylish and comfortable shoes that are waterproof. That's right. You never need to avoid puddles ever again. For me, I am a huge fan of their shoes. My entire shoe rack is basically all Vessis, from their weekend sneaker to their boardwalk slip-ons. I've taken these shoes to the store while hiking, while traveling, and hell, even jumping out of a plane. And now I get to welcome in another addition into my Vessi collection, the Soho. Out the gate, I'm already in love with the style and texture of this shoe. It has a synthetic leather exterior that looks sleek yet casual, and a padded collar that provides extra comfort to my ankles. Plus, just like other Vessi shoes, the Soho rocks Dymatex technology, which means your shoe is breathable yet waterproof. Also, I got the Shoreline Belt Bag from Vessi, which is also, you guessed it, waterproof. And it comes in handy when running errands and my Confucius cosplay from the Clone High reboot. That was like the first time I ever discovered about like torso fanny packs. And guess what? Now I own one. So I highly recommend Vessies. They are my go-to shoes by the door. <laughs> and now fanny pack two. Hit up the description down below and go to Vessie.com slash Saberspark to get 15% off your order. Go hit them up today. And now, back to the video. I'll see you soon, my darling witch. Oh, my. <laughs> um, Cheer, what in tarnation was that about? But what about Witch Miss? What the hell could this movie possibly be about? Well, the story follows a witch named Selma who serves as our Jack stand-in. Selma here has become disinterested in the idea of Halloween, but for like no real reason at all. We're never really told why. She just sort of is, much to the chagrin of her henchman Waffle. This is a bona fide disaster. Meanwhile, in a non-descriptive and devoid of any charm fantasy village, a Christmas elf named Cheer and a leprechaun named Patrick are wandering around and planning for their own respective holidays. Now, I don't want to speak for the people of Ireland, even though I am one-fourth Irish, but um, <laughs> something tells me this accent isn't exactly accurate. The way the actor slips in and out of it, like it's hard to tell if Patrick is from Ireland or like <laughs> Louisiana. Grandest holiday of them all, St. Patty's Day! Meanwhile, in the Halloween land, yes, the Halloween land, Waffle plans with the demon Candy Cane, 
not sure why the Halloween demon is named Candy Cane, on how to get Selma interested in Halloween again. But they don't ever actually tell you what their plan is? <laughs> not really. Candy Cane is just like, we should do this. And then the scene is just over. Just like that. We then bounce back to Cheer and Patrick, who I guess have wandered into Halloween land and gotten lost. I say guess because this movie will often just throw you into scenes, tell you something happened, but not actually show it, and then move on from there and just sort of leave you to piece it together yourself. Because, you know, f you apparently. This particular stretch of the movie is like watching paint dry. Cheer and Patrick stand there and talk about nothing for what feels like an eternity. And when I say stand there, I mean that literally. They do not move. They do not emote. There is no animation save for the bottom jaws, which I'm guessing were plugged into some sort of script and auto mouth synced. They just stand there. Meanwhile, Selma gets word that Cheer and Patrick have wandered into her domain and decides to mess with them by beckoning them over to her castle where Cheer tells her about Christmas, which she becomes fascinated with for no real reason whatsoever. She then decides she wants to take it over and make a new holiday called Witchmas and fill it with ghosts and goblins and all things creepy, which to me sounds just a a whole lot like Halloween, the holiday that she's supposedly bored with. I want to point out that the movie is only an hour long, and at this point, we are about halfway through, and we are just now getting Selma's main motivation laid out on the table, which once more is just another Halloween. And the nightmare before Christmas, Jack had to convince the town to get on board with Christmas in their own particular spooky way. But for this movie, they just want to take Christmas for themselves. Like for the nightmare before Christmas, it sort of works as this really great metaphor about appropriating cultures and also like appreciating your own. Where for this movie, it's just nothing. This Christmas you speak of, why, uh, uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Anyway, Selma lets Patrick and Cheer leave for whatever reason uh, when Santa then learns about Cheer being like gone and missing and sends out a trio of elf brothers named, get this, Jingle, Tingle, <laughs> Bingle. <laughs> uh, they, he sends them out to go look for him, but uh, they won't have to look far because they are back in the same spot where they stood and talked for the first half of the movie. So they go looking for cheer, and then they meet Groot. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Groot. I mean Wood Indra, the sorceress, who is Selma's sister, but also like a tree lady for whatever reason. Okay. She tricks them into thinking she can reunite them with cheer, but instead cast a spell to separate them further. But here's the thing. Not too long after that, the brothers are shown in seemingly the same underground cavern that Cheer and Patrick are in. And the brothers get escorted to them by a magical cavern worm who just so happens to come along and get them out of this. What? Movie, I give up. I shall light the way to your lost brother. Woohoo! awesome. Phew, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but I was really starting to worry. Now you tell us. So back in Halloween land, Selma is starting to gather her army. Yeah, an army to take over Christmas and make it witch miss. Any semblance of this movie having an overarching like narrative? or any sort of like story structure whatsoever just goes right out the window. At this point, there are like 20 minutes left in the movie and it just starts throwing characters at you left and right. Vampire, check. Uh, pumpkin head guy, check. Zombie mummy from the Coco ripoff that I talked about beforehand, check. You better believe he's here. And oh, I can't forget uh, the skeleton guy. You know, he's my favorite. In any other movie, I would say they wanted this to feel cool. But this movie is so devoid of anything redeeming that like, we have no idea who these people are. The movie has no idea what these people are either, just throwing characters for the sake of putting them in. And it's just exhausting. It would be like if the portals opened up an end game and everyone who came out were like characters were just met like 10 minutes ago. And that's like, there's no significance or substance behind them. They're just there. So, you know, like the end of Star Wars, uh, the return of Skywalker or whatever it's called. And what do we get for all of this army building? 
Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As Cheer and Patrick are getting ready to leave Halloween Land, Selma scares them, and uh, Cheer uses his good luck powers to um, flirt with her, and she just kind of like gives up the invasion plan. Just like that. You're one cute witch. Oh, oh my. <sighs> Well, um, I, 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 uh, 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 <laughs> too damn old to be riding your ease backwards, damn it. They go back to the North Pole, and the movie is over. No resolution to the invasion or follow ups with Selma to see how she's feeling about all of this or if she's even learned anything. It just ends. It is genuinely the most abrupt ending I've ever seen in a movie. I actually thought the film was like incomplete and broken, but no, that's the actual ending. It's just that bad. That's right. It will be a witchy old blast. Will there be eggnog? At the start of this video, I mentioned how The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of the most iconic stop motion movies of all time and a holiday tradition. Every piece of the movie oozes craftsmanship and artistry and does all of that by being clever and running a tight script that has things to say but also does not overstay its welcome. It is genuinely a fantastic movie. And if you look into the history of that film, you know what a Herculean task it was to get that movie made. Nightmare was an idea that Tim Burton and Henry Selleck had wanted to make for a really long time, but could not get any backers. And the one company that could have done it had actually fired Burton for basically not falling in line with the company's style, and that was Disney. So Nightmare actually sat on the metaphorical shelf for a long time. That is until Beetlejuice, Batman, and Edward Scissorhands launched Burton into the stratosphere and made him the hottest director to work with at the time. But Burton had contractual obligations to Batman Returns at the time, so he actually couldn't direct the movie, which is where Henry Selleck comes in. All of this to say, Nightmare Nightmare really was born from chaos, and it seemed chaos would follow it for all of its production. For instance, as production was ready to begin with a team and studio space ready to go, Henry Selig was still waiting on the script. And it turns out that the initial writer, Michael McDowell, had his own fascination with white powdery stuff. Let's just say it wasn't snow, and had actually just been snorting away his salary and not writing the movie. This meant Selleck, Burton, and more specifically, the movie's composer and singing voice of Jack, Danny Elfman, had to begin with music before Caroline Thompson could come in at the last minute, could write a movie around all the music Elfman had already made. Nightmare was also the very first feature-length stop-motion animated feature at the time requiring not just a very specific set of animators trained in the stop motion art, but also craftsmen to construct buildings, make costumes, and of course sculpt the characters. This ragtag group of animators, led by Selleck, worked tirelessly for over three years to develop Nightmare. And what did they get for it? Well, Disney was so off-put by the movie that they distanced themselves from it as much as they could by releasing it under the Touchstone banner and slap Burton's name on it in this attempt to use his clout with audiences to get butts in the seats. Now, the movie did okay upon its release, but in my mind, not as well as it could have done had Disney believed in it and thrown some real powerhouse marketing behind it. However, over the years, uh, the movie would find an audience and grow steadily in pop culture until it became the powerhouse that it is today. It really was the little movie that could, a credit to all the people who dared believe in it, when no one else would. Now I say all of this, that if you're going to rip off a movie like Nightmare Before Christmas, you better realize the size of the shoes you're trying to fill. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, redeeming about this movie. Its animation at times is borderline non-existent. Characters will just stand in one place, unmoving and unblinking, while their lower jaws just move ever so slightly to mimic speaking. And oh, the character models. These character models. I'm just gonna assume that not a single model in this movie was made specifically for this movie, but were just instead asset packs ripped off the internet. Patrick, for example, feels like, <laughs> I don't know, a model from a, uh, a LOL surprise video game. 
And Jesus Christ, what is going on with Santa's mouth? Why is it so off-puttingly realistic compared to the other characters? Like, I think the worst thing is that at the end of the day, the movie has absolutely no soul to it, unlike Nightmare, which is just oozing with passion. I look at Jack, who I consider such a heart-achingly tragic, albeit overly dramatic character. And then I look at Selma, who is such a nothing burger that she's barely a presence in her own movie. Or how about Lock, Shock, and Barrel? Remember those guys? Who, with their limited screen time, still managed to have a thousand percent more presence through their performance and animation than all the side characters in this movie combined. None of the jokes land, not a single character is memorable, and it feels slapped together and shoved out the door to be content fodder at the bottom of a Walmart discount bin where some unfortunate kid's grandma will get this instead of The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's their strategy, fuck you wow well now. Listen, I'm not saying movies that lift heavily from other movies can't be good. For example, I think every movie about a small kid befriending an otherworldly creature, pretty much all OET, a great debt. But that does not mean that they can't put their own creative spin on things. How to Train Your Dragon has a lot of ET in its DNA but it's also its own beautiful beast as well. And maybe, just maybe, the people behind Witchmas maybe wanted to do the same thing at the start, but just gave up instead and decided to just treat it all like a chore rather than something they cared about. Nah, that's a lie. They don't give a fuck. They just wanted to copy Nightmare Before Christmas for money. Who am I kidding? It's just content to just make shovelware content in order to take up a kid's time when they could have been watching something else. Like I generally don't like to say things feel AI generated because I think even if something is bad, you should try to respect and genuinely critique the human effort that goes into it. But this movie feels AI generated to a T. And the most damning thing about that, this movie came out in 2020, years before ChatGPT was even a thing your regular everyday person could get their hands on. Now I know I sound overly heated right now, and I know that this movie just continues in a long line of cheap cash grab ripoffs designed to trick clueless consumers. But it really hits different when not only does it happen to your favorite movie, but it's also this bad. When there's no respect for the people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into the original and had to fight a corporate uphill battle to even get the movie noticed, you can't help but get extra mad. Again, this movie was the longest hour of my life and I'm never going to get it back. Fuck you, Selma. You are truly evil and I hate you wow now. I'm coming for ya. <laughs> I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Factor. What is Factor, you ask? It's actually uh, making your meal nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. For me, I'm ridiculously busy. And with fall now being here, I'm even busier now than ever before. I love that fourth quarter grind, right? Like I barely have time to eat lunch. But that is where Factor has my back. I don't have to worry about running to the grocery store or prepping food or spending a stupid amount of money to order in. Instead, I grab a tasty Factor meal, pop it into my toaster oven for two minutes, and boom, it's time to eat some chicken or pork or beef or whatever the hell I want that they give me. Hell, even my dad loves Factor. Like I, I had a box I had brought to his house one time and I left it there by mistake. And when I came back, he's like, hey, I ate all this stuff, it's gone. And I'm like, okay, it's dad approved. Awesome, thanks pop. My dad's so cool, I love him. Also, I'm doing keto again and Factor is helping me out on that front. They offer keto options that are loaded with meats and veggies, but are calorie smart with around 550 calories or less per serving. I got the black chicken. I got the black pepper and sage pork chop. I got the chicken piccata. I got the garlic and herb chicken breast. Well, I did until my dad ate them, but they're all tasty and curated around my keto goals. So head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That is, once again, Factor75.com. Or click the link down below and use code SABERSPARK50 to get 50% off your order. Again, I legit love Factor. I appreciate them for supporting the channel. Go check them out today.